We're kicking off the show with NFL price checks. So let's take a look at week seven salaries starting with quarterbacks. Kyler Murray and Patrick Mahomes are at the top of the board at 8,500, 8,400 respectively. So Pierce, do you want to pay up for one of those guys or looking a little further down the board here? Those guys are in some great spots, but I'm going to go to the bottom of the board with Matt Ryan at 5,700. Not on a lot of people's radar coming off a of bye week and the week before that he played in London. He got off to a slow start this season. Remember, that first game of the year, they had not played at all in the preseason. The first team had not played together, and they looked like it. They were terrible. But his last four games, he's averaging almost 300 yards per game. He's got 10 touchdowns and three interceptions. Looked great in his last outing. And he gets a really nice matchup against a Miami secondary that has been terrible. They've got some big-name quarterbacks, but they're all banged up. They struggled against Tom Brady giving up 400 yards. They struggled against Trevor Lawrence, giving up 300 yards. Matt Ryan should be able to torch this defense. All right, Reed, where are you going to QB? Yeah, Pierce, I'm glad you brought up that game because we'll get to it in a little bit. I love it. Uh, I'm going Jalen Hurts at the top, I think, against the Raiders. What you can do is, and the defense that they play, right, is don't give up the big play. Let everything happen beneath them. Jalen Hurts is a guy that we know his average DK fantasy points per game is very high, right? It's a high floor. So I do like him there. And a second one, too. This one, this was kind of what we were talking about pre-show with the hot takes. How about a little Jared Goff, guys? I know Jared Goff has been, well, <laughs> not great. He has to be great, but he's so cheap here. You got the revenge game narrative. I don't think that matters much. We got Dan Campbell saying, hey, you got to step it up. But what we've seen from a guy like Jared Goff is that in these bigger games with bigger totals, and we know that they're going to be passing a ton, he could get you, I don't know, 3x his price, which is $5,000, so 15. I know you might not win a GPP with that, but he's someone that I'm kind of interested in trying to play and be a little bit contrarian. He's so cheap. All right, Matt, who are you going with? Um, Pierce and I are laughing at Reed's answer for different reasons, because I think I actually like Jared Goff hey. even more than Reed does. Um, this is a week where there are some good value quarterbacks. I think Lamar Jackson's underpriced. I think Carr versus Hertz is a good matchup. I think Matt Ryan versus the Dolphins, both sides of that game, maybe even um, Sam Darnold versus Daniel Jones. Like, I think that there is enough value that people overlook the Rams-Lions game because the spread for this game is massive. It's at 15 or 16 points right now. Um, and the other part of this is that if you play Goff, you're going to have one of the only lineups that can actually afford Cooper Cup on the other side, who's priced up to 8,400. So we'll get there to re at receiver. But I think Goff at 5K, like that's actually legitimate value, where I think he should be $1,000 higher than that. And they're going to be throwing all game. I don't know how much I'm buying into the revenge. It could be a factor in the play calling. Maybe it's not. But either way, this is a really low price for a quarterback who's playing against a defense that actually has been pretty much average this year. The Rams are great because of their offense, not their defense this year. So um, Reed and I are on the same page. That's right, Pierce. All right, Reed, how about running backs? Uh, Derrick Henry the most expensive guy by 300 at 9,200. You got Alvin Kamara, you got Aaron Jones as you go down the board. So whose price do you like here? Yeah, that's a cheat code with uh, Derrick Henry. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. Uh, but I'm actually staying in that Rams game in Detroit. I like Derrick Henderson a lot. I know he's going to be popular. He has been over the past week, and he comes into another game, right? You like huge favorites, the Rams are, at home. So you want that 1A, you want that stud running back. But even going on the flip side, DeAndre Swift, he's getting, like, he got most of those carries and most of that work in, in that game last week. It wasn't Jamal Williams. Maybe Jamal Williams was dealing with somewhat of an injury, so Swift is that guy. But he's someone that you're seeing here get all the pass work. So stacking him maybe, and, and, you know, if you wanted to, like, what we were talking about to get Cooper Cup in there, what Matt was talking about, DeAndre Swift on the bring, on the bring back, is someone nice. And Pierce mentioned it, right? That Dolphins game with Atlanta, I think there's some viable running backs in that game. Uh, and, and look, Miami has given up uh, DK fantasy points to dual threat or dual running backs, excuse me, like, you know, 1A, 1B in that backfield. And so the Falcons, right? I know I'm doing a lot of Jeff Ulrich here mentioning everyone on the slate, but the Falcons have a decent 1A, 1B in that backfield with Cordero Patterson and Mike Davis. So those are some of the guys I like. All right, Matt, when you're looking at running backs, whose price stands out to you? Yeah, I like Swift also. I'm, I'm sort of with Reed here because I think Henderson is going to be really popular. Yeah. My guess is he is the most popular running back for the week this week. So for that reason, I don't really find him that appealing. And I also, that's part of the reason I like the passing games here too, is if they do well, I think it's more likely that Henderson doesn't. 
Um, but DeAndre Swift is involved enough both through the air and on the ground that I think he makes sense also anyway. Um, and then Miles Sanders at 5,100. I don't think this is going to be a spot that people actually want to go to that much. There's a lot of running backs in the 5K range. The Eagles are underdogs in Las Vegas. I don't know that they necessarily should be three and a half point underdogs. That's a different conversation. But Sanders, either way, like this is a really low price for him. His price has been dropping over the last several weeks. The Eagles have had tough games where they haven't been able to run the ball that much. Tampa Bay last week, probably the worst matchup that a guy can have as a running back going against an opponent that is so good against the run and also the Eagles were trailing. And still, Sanders actually had some big runs in the fourth quarter and ended up with semi-decent game. So I think that that's a price for maybe a guy who's getting 50-50 split in the backfield. Sanders is still the guy who should get more of the workload, at least if the Eagles are in the game and the game's close, maybe even if they have the lead. So to me, there's just a lot of upside for that price. All right, Pierce, who are you looking at at running back? Matt and Reed mentioned every running back on the slate and he didn't get to my guy, which makes me a little concerned. I might be putting myself out here a little bit, but James Connor at 5,600, people don't like to pay this price for a guy that doesn't really get active in the receiving game, has to split some carries. But if you look at this matchup, you look at this game script, it sets up really well for James Connor. Houston is a terrible uh, rush defense and they had a terrible rush defense last season so when you see his team struggle two seasons in a row you know this is a place to target you think about game script Arizona should absolutely destroy them in this game get way ahead and then run the ball with Connor Connor had two touchdowns in a game they won easily against Los Angeles he had two touchdowns in a game that they won handily against Jacksonville three of those four were practically garbage time touchdowns I would expect that again last week they had a comfortable lead and he had 70 yards on the ground I mean if you just think of the game flow here with Arizona being up early and then staying on top, it should be a lot of action for Connor, and no one is going to play this guy. All right, talk to me about wide receivers, Matt. Who do you like here? So as part of this Jared Goff stack, I think Amon Ross St. Brown is appealing at 4,100. That might be a little bit of a reach, though. I mean, that's really, if you're playing that stack, you can include him. But as far as like just the obvious values go, I think T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, Jacoby Myers, those are guys that are going to get a lot of attention. And rightfully so. Um, the guy that I like the most for this slate, at least as of now, is a little more expensive, and that's Chris Godwin at 5,900. Um, Godwin has seemed to fall behind Mike Evans and Antonio Brown on the depth chart recently, but I don't think that's actually the case. I think that those guys have just had their touchdowns. Godwin hasn't gotten the end zone much lately, and he's due for some positive regression going forward. So to me, he's just been a bit unlucky over the last handful of weeks and he's underpriced as a result. 5,900 for a receiver this good in a passing game that throws this much. Um, it's It seems like it's much lower to me than it should be. All right, Pierce, who are you looking at at wide receiver? A.J. Brown at 6,300. Julio Jones left last night's game. It's doubtful that he'll play this week, and if he is, does play, I don't see him being a big role. Derrick Henry, as we mentioned earlier, is an absolute monster, and teams are going to have to focus on shutting down Derrick Henry. I know that's impossible, but Kansas City is going to try their best and Kansas City really can't stop anything to begin with. So this is really going to open up a lot of passing lanes and opportunities for A.J. Brown. Seven catches, 91 yards, and, and basically just the second half last night. And then if you think about how this game's going to play out, I think Patrick Mahomes probably going to get 400 yards considering that Tennessee pretty much lost their entire secondary yesterday. So this is going to be a shootout. Tennessee's going to have to keep up. I'm sure Derrick Henry will do his part, but I expect a really big game from A.J. Brown. Reed, talk to me. Yeah, I wanted to really stand up here, well, sit, uh, uh, and talk about Brandon Cooks. Uh, we don't know what Tyrod, or, or Tyrod, excuse me, what his status is. He's at $6,000, Brandon Cooks is. Look, his target share is massive, right? It is massive. And you talk about all these really good receivers. I think Brandon Cooks doesn't get that type of love in GPPs. But the guy that I don't really want to talk about is Jalen Waddle. Like, I, I get that a lot of the receivers last week were out, and so he got a lot of that work. At $5,600, we've got some speedy receivers here. I think we have to start talking about Jalen Wall, and I know his target share is inconsistent. As someone that the Dolphins, granted, you could have you could have got Jamar Chase, but you went after Jalen Waddle. I get it. You traded down. But I do like what he does with Tua tonga I think Tua is probably one of the better streamers this week for quarterbacks. And Jalen Waddle and, and Tua have this connection. You've seen it in week one. Now we see it again last week. And so I really like Waddle, that, uh, that cheaper price tag and that shootout, potential shootout in Atlanta and Miami. All right, finally, let's talk about tight ends. Pierce, who do you like here? Kyle Pitts, 5,900. He has finally arrived in the London game, nine catches, over 100 yards receiving, and a touchdown. The week before that, he had 10 targets. 
He's fifth in targets per game for tight ends. Before the bye week, he led all tight ends in red zone targets. He's got a soft matchup against Miami. I like stacking him with uh, Matt Ryan. All right, Reed, who do you like? It's Darren Waller. Uh, where has where has he gone? <laughs> we saw a thousand targets in Week One, and all of a sudden, Darren Waller is playing second fiddle to everything else that's happening in Las Vegas. But the, the Philadelphia Eagles, like I, I get that you know they that they're decent, right? They have linebackers that are decent, but the carousel of linebackers that they have isn't really. Uh, it can't really stay up with Darren Waller. And I think Darren Waller has this bigger game. He's, I know he's more expensive, but he's someone that a lot of people are probably going to go to Mark Andrews. Uh, but Darren Waller is right there. I like that game, even on the other side, too, with Dallas Goddard. All right, Matt, who are you rolling with? So I think the value play this week is probably Zach Ertz. Like, there really aren't any tight ends that are significantly underpriced. We have Ricky Seals Jones up to 3,700 finally. So he's priced like an actual NFL starter. Um, Ertz on his new team with the Cardinals, I'll, I'll be interested to see if he gets that much attention. But I do like Darren Waller. I think TJ Hawkinson, like this mid-price range for tight ends, I think will go overlooked. Pierce said Kyle Pitts, like I think that could be a spot where people don't really play because Ertz to me is the value guy. And then there's Travis Kelsey all the way up the board in this Chiefs-Titans game that I think will be very interesting to a lot of people. So anywhere in the middle, um, I think you're getting fairly contrarian there. And I'll I'll go I'll go with Hawkinson. Let's just stick with the Jared Goff theme. So that's that's going to be my favorite guy for this week.